some of my larger white outer lamp Lagos Calvus fry. Enjoying the Rapashi is in the next tank as well. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the maintenance that I go through to maintain the fish room. So let's get into this week's video. So the first thing we're gonna be doing today is cleaning out my sump. This sump runs 22 aquariums in my fish room. They all drain to it. And basically a sump is a filter for all those aquariums. So I've been a bit lazy with the maintenance in the sump of late and it needs a good clean out. And the reason it needs a good clean out is the water's just bypassing all the sections in this sump and just dumping straight out into the return uh, pump area of the sump. Now obviously some of the water is going down through the filter matting and the biological filtration side and into the return area. However, most of it would be just simply overflowing, following the path of least resistance and dumping in to the return pump section of the sump. So if you're new to my channel, the first chamber on this sump system is my uh, me mechanical filtration. It goes, the water's meant to go down in, through the sponges and the mechanical filtration side, come up this bubble trap, go into the biological filtration side of the sump, down through all the lava rock, down through the pumice stone, and then up through this second bubble trap and into the return pump chamber where I've got some heaters as a backup. This fish room is air conditioned and uh, the heaters that are in this sump are there purely as a backup if something was to go wrong with the air con. So what I'm gonna to do today is clean the sponges basically that are in this by, uh, mechanical filtration side, get them clean, and then I'll go on to the next thing in the fish room for maintenance today. So guys, all the sponges are now clean. This was the top layer. I'm gonna be putting that at the bottom now. So I cycle through the layers and one of the cleanest layers that was at the bottom will now be at the top. So the next thing we're doing today is making some microworm cultures. We're gonna make one from scratch. We're gonna restart this one because this was my latest culture and it's starting to um, decline. I'm not getting as many microworms out of this culture at the moment. And then we're gonna clean up a brand new one and now I clean it all out because it's absolutely dirty. This culture's dead and it absolutely reeks. And that's why we're doing this outdoors today. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my clean container here. Oats, a decent layer of oats in this. We've got some aquarium water. I don't like to use water straight out of the tap because of the chlorine and chloramine might kill the microbes so you want to make that into a nice paste you can see i'm not really measuring anything out here it's pretty simple stuff notice i'm not um, contaminating uh, any cross contamination with the spoons here i'm just going to add some yeast to keep the yeast in the freezer again I'm not measuring anything out here but you want to really give it a good mix make sure everything is wet if you don't it could get fungus and uh, your culture will die. Now, the existing culture, I'm just gonna grab a spoon of it out. You see, I've got a big hunk there. Now, I'm gonna mix it in, mix it in really well. This is key. If you don't mix this in well enough, you will get fungus growing on your culture. So you wanna inoculate your new culture really well. So the reason why I'm doing this outside today, because microworms smell, smell really bad. <laughs> I don't wanna stink up my house. So I just use these Chinese food containers, uh, these little takeaway containers. There's tiny holes in the lid, and that's all there is to it. That's a new microworm culture I created, ready to go for the fish room. Now with this one, again, very simple stuff. We're gonna add some more oats to it. This is an existing culture that I'm gonna restart, because what will happen over time is the culture gets wetter, so you don't want it too wet, because then the microworms won't grow, go up the sides of the container. Again, uniformly spread the new lot of oats in this so none of them are dry it's stinky stuff but it's worth it for your fry great food free well as free as you know some yeast and oats can be and uh, once you've got your culture it will last you forever as long as you keep doing this so what i'm going to also do now is add some more oats um, more, more yeast to it just a little bit that's more than enough my friend cockatoos are back see me in the yard think they're going to get fed I'm going to stir in that yeast really well as well. Okay, that's our culture ready to go. That's a recharge culture. So we've seen how quickly it is to do two cultures ready to go. Brand new one, recharge one. So guys, the next thing we're going to be doing today is making Rapashi gel food. Now I've made this on the channel before, so you can watch that video for a complete uh, video on how to make it in detail. And I'll put a link to the video right here. 
but uh, we're going to quickly make some up now because I've never tried this one. This is the super green. I've tried Soylent Green before, but I've been able to get my hands on some super green from Nat's Fish. So what I've got here are some ice cube trays. These are one centimeter cube ice cube trays. You can get them off eBay relatively cheap. We've got a Tupperware container that I've already measured out, 450 mils of aquarium water. Okay, key note, aquarium water, not tap water, because of the chloramine and chlorine in these in tap water. We've got a measuring cup for the Rapashi gel food. We've got an old credit card that you'll see me, what I'm going to use with that to um, fix up the Rapashi gel food. We've got another measuring cup that's separate to the measuring cup I used to fill the Tupperware container with aquarium water, so we're not mixing up um, the powder into the wet containers. Uh, so this is I'm going to be using this measuring cup to measure out the Rapashi gel food, and we've got a fork to mix up the Rapashi powder with. So this is a brand new container. As you can see, it's still sealed. And again, I'm doing this outside because the stuff does smell not too bad it just smells like your regular fish food right but it does smell nonetheless this is filled right to the brim that's fantastic look how full that is very full let's see this isn't going to fit in the container so i'm just going to measure it all out in here now it's very dusty so that's another reason why i'm doing this outside you know, it'd be better if it wasn't as breezy as it is today and this should be a good enough amount that's pretty much bang on 150 i'll just put a little scoop in for good measure so you can make this as concentrated as you want uh, it doesn't really uh, matter if you under under concentrated or over concentrated the key thing is i don't want to waste much of it uh, but the best thing about this stuff is it is a powder uh, all the dirty utensils I can put into say a fry tank and they'll pick off this food. So we've got our measurements here. What I'm going to do now is heat this up in the microwave. I want it boiling hot. So that's the key thing. So you need to use a microwave proof container to do this. And again it's aquarium water. So I'm going to pop it in the microwave. Your microwave will obviously be different to mine so I'm just going to pop it in there for a couple minutes until I see it boiling and then it's ready to go. Now this stuff is obviously hot water, boiling water. So I'm going to work pretty quickly now because the rapashi will start to set very quickly. So notice I'm adding the rapashi to the water, not adding water to the rapashi. That's because I don't want to get any air bubbles underneath the rapashi. So let's see how we go with this. So I'm just mixing it up really well, making sure to wet all the powder. So if I added water to the rapashi, it would be hard to get all the rapashi wet but adding Wapashi to the water instead uh, makes a big difference there, makes it a little bit easier. So, now comes the tricky part, or the fun part, pouring the Wapashi into the gel, into the moulds. As quickly as I can, and as neatly as I can. Probably needed a little bit more water, not to worry. Now we've got a lot of Rapashi in here still. You'll see what I'll do with that soon. But with this stuff, we're just gonna use a credit card to smooth it out. Doesn't need to go all the way to the edges. Ideally, it would fill out the entire tray, and that's okay. I want it to be spread out in nice, easy to um, use cubes. So that's set very quickly. Ideally, I would have had a little bit more water. So I'm just going to put these in as well. You can see the gel just goes straight in. So we've got a bit of leftover. We've got this container here, we've got some on the credit card, we've got some on the fork all good none of that's going to go down the sink none of it's going to be wasted we're going to just pop them into the aquariums that we want to feed it to and uh, first of all let it cool off this doesn't need to be frozen you can feed it just like this uh, just that room temperature is fine the fish will happily eat it like that or as a powdered form uh, but these will go in the freezer and then eventually into a big tupperware container and they'll last me a few weeks in the fish room so that's all there is to it to make rapashi i wanted to show you the consistency of the rapashi, once it's 
turn it into a gel. So I'm just going to swipe my finger and watch how clean the back of the Tupperware container is. So it comes off very easily with your finger. You can see it's like a gel now. So I've just been letting it cool down at room temperature in the fish room for a little bit. And now we're going to feed this to the fish. So guys, there's all the rapashi. After it's been frozen in those cubes, those silicon ice cube trays. Uh, could have measured out the water a bit better, but uh, this stuff would be more concentrated than I normally make, so it's all good. So we're just going to feed some of the fish the cubes now. So here's the Kalinga Golds eating it. I had to turn the flash off because it was freaking the fish out. So there's some of my larger white Alto Lampologus Calvus Fry. You can tell there's a cube in the corner there on the left that they're picking at. Here's some of the younger fry. Again, white Alto Lampologus Calvus Fry. Enjoying the Rapashi. Is in the next tank as well. Just cotton on to what that stuff is, that's for sure. So they're all white Alto Lampologus Calvus. These guys, though, are black Alto Lampologus Calvus fry by first spawn. There is a load in here. You can see, I don't have to light on on these tanks. The light is off. They get enough light from the other tanks in the fish room. So there you have it guys, some of the maintenance that I go through to maintain the fish room. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.